Okay. Let's max that out. Let's keep working on this. We still have plenty of energy, so I can keep working on stuff. Let's see. Speaking of updates, Orphan had an update. I don't know. I don't know how I want to put it. Until Warframe fixes just a little bit of its, like, variety when it comes to grinding certain resources, I'm going to have a hard time going back to the game. It's it's one of those where, like, I love it to bits, but I can't stand farming right now. And, I mean, it's it's the cursed word of the year. And so, like, as, as much as I like that game... I think my biggest problem is to progress at this point, I would have to go do Index for, like, 10 hours. And I don't want to do that at all. If there were, like, four or five different things that made as much money as Index and you just kind of did whatever on them, I'd be super cool with it. But because it's all just one action to make money, it's just like, Because I am penniless in that game. And will remain penniless until I suck it up and do it. I don't wanna. So yeah, if they add if they add madcap money making that isn't like immediately boring. I'll definitely go back. Because I still don't even have the spaceship. I think the main problem is just like, I feel like every time a new piece of content comes out, I get it. I'm like, cool, I got this new thing. And then it's just like, yeah, but I have to grind a bunch to even uh, enjoy it. And it's just like, eh. And yeah, I know they're rebalancing things, and so, like, yeah, at some point I will probably sit down and, like, really get into it again. It's just, it's so easy for me to not right now. Especially because it's one of those that, like, every time I try and stream Warframe, people are just like, no, and then flee in terror. Mainly because I don't think it's actually an infinitely, it's not a very watchable game compared to a lot of other games. Wow, there's so many of them. Actually, uh, while we're here, Cleaver? Cleaver. Oh, Cleaver's a shotgun. I get it. Not as, not sure if I'm as big on the shotgun as I'd like to be. Let's see. Don't care about the money, and it would be the problem. I mean, I need both desperately, but that's the <laughs> still that's still the problem. It's like, yeah, I want to get these cool things. Oh, grind, meh. I mean, I, I've probably, I probably talked about ReCore. How many of you guys hanging out right now have seen ReCore or know anything about ReCore? Because there's a game that came out four years ago? Four years ago. ReCore, I don't even remember who made it. Yeah, ReCore exists, that's all I know. Yeah, can't blame anybody. It's an okay game. It it came out of kind of nowhere. Oh. Oh, that's what it is. It's a KJ Inafune game. I'm not... This makes sense. So... Effectively, they were trying to mix Mega Man and Metroid and, like, took some of the original creators. The problem is, it was just an okay game. But after a certain point in the game, you you get to the final level. Uh, and, yeah, now that I know Keiji Inafune was 
part of this, everything makes a lot more sense to me. That's the game of the robot dog, right? Yeah. Uh, idea was good, the execution needed, needed work, which makes sense because, again, KG Inafune is, that's, that's pretty much how you would describe anything that man creates. Um, yeah, the final level of that game was ouch. Not only was it, like, really hard, the biggest issue for it, uh, for it for me was the fact that there were doors, and the doors would say, you don't have enough MacGuffins to get through. Go get more MacGuffins. That's it. There was no real plot reason why you needed the MacGuffins apart from there or a power source. Um, and so you just had to constantly farm for these MacGuffins all over the place. And, like, don't get me wrong, I like... I like collectathons and I like collectathon style gameplay. I think that can be really fun. My biggest beef is that when it's when it's kind of forced on me, uh, it gets really frustrating. Cause I don't really I don't really like um, artificial gating of content. Uh, I think actually Ghost Recon Wild Wildlands had similar issues, uh, from what I heard. Where it's just kind of like arbitrarily like, you're not in the right level zone! Go back to where you belong! And it's like, what? Also, holy shit, shit, just going non-stop planes here might have been the right idea. I'll admit the towers in this game have been maybe disappointing, but I get maybe I just don't have enough of them. But like, there were definitely reasons why you wanted to get the MacGuffins. Like, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna deny that necessarily. The main issue is just that, like, don't don't force the player to to get them randomly. I, maybe the closest thing I could think of it being done well would be the uh, galaxy preparedness uh, meter in Mass Effect Two and Three, where like if your meter wasn't high enough, the final battle, the final mission, wouldn't go well for you. And I really dug that. All right. Like, I really dug that from like a, oh, hey, there's kind of a, a thing you're working towards, a big goal. But when it came down to it, it was just this giant meter that was like, hey, now you have to go do just like every, you just have to go do every side quest and mission or some multiplayer or some other stuff. Or if you did like the pre-order, you just started with like a bunch of points on the preparedness. You know, it was dumb. And I think that was kind of what frustrated me in ReCore was it was just like, there's not even a reason for this apart from you just don't have enough. And I'm like, Ugh, don't do that. That's a very quick way to just like completely burn your audience out of playing your game. Grind is not content. I guess the easiest way I could describe it would be, it truly would be like if you got to Ganon's castle and uh, to fight Ganon, you had to have most of the Korok seeds and it's just like, why? And, you know, effectively never getting a proper answer on that one. So what do we want to do? I like the idea of Cyclones. We've got three plane types and six sides. We could just go banana. Yeah, let's just go bananas. I'm just gonna unlock the slots first, and we'll go from here. To fight Ganon, you must have 800 of the 900 Korok seeds. Like, if Nintendo had said that, I think a lot of people specifically would have still done it and would have done it gladly because I think it was fun. You know, getting the Korok seeds was kind of interesting. But, like, from my perspective, I think I got maybe, like, 200 of them. And then was just like, man, this is kind of repetitive. I sure, I sure played more Breath of the Wild here. And then stopped. Same thing kind of with the shrines and whatnot. Like, I can kind of understand sort of heart-gating the, uh, the Master Sword. But even then, I thought that was kind of tacky. It was like, no, no, just give it to me. Like, put the Master Sword at the bottom of a dungeon. 
make the dungeon hard so you want that extra health. But if you're really good at the game, like, screw it, who cares? Oh, hey, it's the Dragon's Deep outro. I used this song for our previous campaign. I'm honestly, I'm probably going to just continue using it for the next campaign, too. I've yet to edit that up, but it won't even be happening. Uh, next session won't even be happening until two weeks from now, three weeks from now. I gotta figure out exactly when Ash and Jazz get back. But yeah, the more games I can play that don't just arbitrarily gate me behind, like, some weird grind wall, the better. Like, I, I mentioned that I'm kind of hooked on Resident Evil right now, and one thing that I really respect about the game is just how much... How little nonsense there was. Ooh, that's a bunch. Alright, uh, let's go back to the Tempest. I'm not actually really using the Plasma Mortar that much, but I think it's still better. Than what I've got. I also will fully admit that, like, a lot of this opinion purely comes from the fact that I do... I, I don't play video games on my own anymore. Um, like, I, I actually don't remember the last time I loaded up a video game to just play for my, my own benefit. I did it a little bit with Rune Factory 4 last week, but that was mostly to see, like, should I, like, stick it out and continue the series or just, like, you know, kill it in the cradle before I, like, spend too much time and get frustrated with the game? That's... Oh, man. Beyond even the grind, because I've definitely been talking about that too much in the past month. Uh, You know what really has been grinding my gears lately? Games that don't shut up and let you just play them. Like, there's a couple of games where I'm okay with it, especially when it's, like, just movie mode. Just, here you go, here is the opening cutscene. It's two hours long, go get some popcorn, get comfortable. You don't have to press any but buttons, we're just gonna let you watch. I'm cool with that. I can work with that. The ones that get my goat are the ones that are like, okay, here's a two-minute cutscene, and you have to press A for every bit of dialogue, and then you're going to have to walk out of the room and then back in, and there's a five-minute cutscene where you still have to interact with everything, and you might, get, might be able to say, like, yes, no, or, like, three kind of choose-your-response canned answers that don't actually matter. Like, Fable ruins AAA gaming to some small degree. I... Uh, I saw, I have a developer specifically asking me, um, let's see, so we want, do two cyclones and two interceptors probably. Or we could do four cyclones right off the bat. Because there's three plane types I mean, it's about the same thing, isn't it? I'm trying to decide what variety of symmetry do I want to go for. Nah, let's let's do this. Let's get more cyclones. Planes! My planes will blot out the sky. Okay, uh... But so what I what I was gonna say is like um, I I was specifically playing Rune Factory four recently, and I'm sure a number of you guys were here for that stream. Uh, but I was just so checked out of the of the game before it even began that it was hard for me to want to even stick through with it. Let's see, when will we hit the plane cap? I don't think there is one. Uh, let's see. But, uh, what was I going to say? Right. Uh, that was one of those games that just, like, it took forever to actually get to gameplay. 
and it was driving me up the walls a little bit. I I think I first really noticed this as an issue with Pokemon. I'm sure a lot of people. Yeah, there are six sides. Each side has three slots, and there are three planes, so why not put one plane in each side? Yeah, I was just trying to weigh the aesthetics of, like, uh, having this be the Cyclone side, this be a Cyclone side, Interceptor, Interceptor, Spectre, Spectre. I think that would have worked too, but I think I think I'm gonna do that. Yeah, just have one of one of each and each, just in case they do get hit too much. Okay, uh, but like I I don't know. I I assume a lot of you guys are probably aware of the uh the Pokemon Sun and Moon issue where they effectively just didn't start the game and were just like tutorials forever. Also, very long dialogue and people are like, I just want to catch stuff and they're like, what in a Pokemon game? That's stupid. Um. And so now I'm, like, kind of hypersensitive to it because I realized it's one of the things that, like, absolutely grinds my gears when I'm playing a game. Because, uh, like, say what you want about, like, this game, for example. I actually don't even know what the complaints would be apart from the fact that it's kind of repetitive. Um, but, like, this game is just like, here's the opening cutscene. Here's a thin, va thinly veiled reason for why you're doing what you're doing. Cool. Now go kill some shit. Admittedly, it did actually run the problem of having, um... Almost nothing for the first half hour. Like, you have no tools, no towers, and you're just kind of slowly picking things off. Now things got a lo lot more fun, and I just went bananas with, uh, planes. <laughs> um. I think we'll do Interceptor's Nest next, followed by Spectre's Cripes. Just plain spam seems to have worked wonders. It's weird, I was really expecting towers to be my go-to, but not for this game. But yeah, I I don't know. I just I'm starting to develop uh ironbound peeves that are very difficult for me to uh overlook whenever I play a game. And I don't know what to do about it. Okay. So we've got some red. Unfortunately, I think I need purple cores if I want to upgrade. Yep, I need a purple core if I want to upgrade my disintegrator. And I haven't seen those go by in nearly 20 days. Oh, well, it's fine. Let's keep doing this. See, I like watching Persona 5. It was very much anime. And I kept the plot going, I think. My biggest issue with Persona 5 was just the fact that they kept asking me questions. And I believe I, I had to specifically press A to continue the dialogue. Nothing annoys me more to, than having... Well, that... That game also wasn't fully voice acted. Like, a lot of the side content was straight up not voiced. And so, like, eh, it wasn't so bad, but it was definitely one of those where it's like, if I can't, if I have no agency, or the agency is an illusion, just take it away from me and let me sit back and relax. Because, yeah, I actually really like long cutscenes. Like, freaking long cutscenes where I can just be like, Well, it's break time. Just just chill. Just put my hands back. I mean, straight up, I could probably do that with this game. I could probably just completely give up on actual gameplay and just be like, Eh, my plane's got this. There's a couple of missions where I'd probably have to care a little bit more. Uh, do I? No, no, I don't... I don't have any purple cores, so there's no point in worrying about that. So I'm just going to keep picking up Cyclones, because I have a plane problem. What was a good game for that? Xenoblade. I think Xenoblade was a good balance of like cutscenes where you could just kind of kick back and do do whatever. Like I, I remember really enjoying playing Xenoblade 2. And X. <laughs> Damon X Machina was 90% cutscenes and dialogues that really pushed my buttons. I liked the fact that the characters talked during missions to some degree, because then I could just be like, okay, focus on what I'm doing and not have to worry about not saying a word. 
Uh, at the same play, uh, same time, Damon X Machina's plot was stupid, and I had to press X through every single one of those cutscenes. Cutscenes where it was just the talking heads. It was just like, Bleh. I don't want that. I, I, it's weird. It does seem to be largely a, a JRPG problem, from what I've seen. And I'm not necessarily sure why that is. Maybe it's just because uh, the audience is more patient with that kind of design. But, like, I don't really remember a whole lot of, like, bullshit slow slowness uh, to a lot of more Western titles. There's definitely a number of indie games that have taken forever to get going. But, like, I, remember, I, I think the reason why I'm stuck on this is I just put it, uh, or I... I guess it's not out for another hour, but my um, my one-off video on Grand Blue Fantasy Versus is going out today, and that was a game that like I was like, yeah, let's just load up the story mode and see how this goes, and it was like cutscene management, management tutorial, cutscene management tutorial, tutorial. I didn't actually get to play the game until I just turned off the story mode and just went to go play the free play mode, which like compare and contrast that to Smash Bros, for example. You load up Smash Bros, and you are in the thick of it, like, immediately. Oh. Uh, can I buy this? No. We need a little bit more. But, like... With the exception of maybe the latest Smash Bros being a little complicated, and I never actually played the Wii U version, um, but, like... I, I grew up with uh, Smash Melee, mainly, and, like, going on adventure mode on that one, or even Brawl's adventure mode, it's just like, alright, cool, now we're playing Smash Bros. Almost immediately. Okay, let's get Interceptors next. Gonna take a little bit of doing keeping this even. We might want to pick up more Interceptors than we get bombers. I would love to actually see detailed statistics on which structures did the most amount of damage. Because from my perspective, my towers are mostly useless. I don't think I've really seen my artillery towers do a whole heck of a lot of damage. They have Smash Bros. story modes, one short cutscene, almost instantly into a fight. And I love that, because there's no, like, nonsense to it. And it's like, I could take that in a JRPG. Well, I can take a longer cutscene in a JRPG. I just don't want to be... I don't want to have, like, nested cutscenes that don't matter? I want to remember being quite bad as Baldur's Gate 1. CRPGs are really bad for it. Yeah. Like, I remember... I loved Neverwinter Nights, but the initial academy was just miserable. Trying trying to get out of that, like, tutorial zone was just brutal. And it kind of burned me out of playing the game. And so, I'd, like, I'd launch as one of the DLCs and it would just be as slow. I think I got kind of far in those games, but, like, that's the one thing Black Isle never really learned how to do, which was, like, start you fast. The only... The only, like, uh, one that I think they really got it to work on was Baldur's Gate 2, and even then, eh? Like, I remember Icewind Dale was pretty slow from the beginning. Icewind Dale 2 was glacial. And there's something to be said about the, like, the immersion of what they managed to construct and whatnot. At the same time, it's just, like, sometimes it's kind of nice if you can just, uh... If you can actually just go on an adventure and not feel like you're wasting time. I think I actually split hairs with uh, Shell over this sometimes. Where she specifically wants to like talk to everybody. And I'm like, I want to play the game at least like a little bit during the first episode. Um, and so like, I will sometimes be specifically rushing or like ignoring things. So that I can actually play the game within the first hour. So it's like... Hey, my first episode is nothing but cutscene. It's like the And she will get mad at me for that because yeah, I am actually ignoring much of the plots. Uh because I want to 
I want to see what the game actually has to offer. And I feel like it's more of an issue of design if that has to be, like, an issue. Icewind Dale is glacial. I know what I said. Um, freaking give me a purple core. All right. We're not, we're just not getting any more big guns, I guess. Whoosh. All right, whatever. It's fine. Anything else? No. Siege? Sure. I have a lot of green cores. No purple cores. There are some weird problems with this game. It's not so bad, but it's kind of like, man, I could... I could build so many things if the... If I could, like, trade resources up or down. Because, like, these should break down into two and then more and... I don't even know. Okay. At least we managed to get almost everything that we want. There's just a couple that we don't have. I guess Wander... 100 percent research? Nah. I just haven't bothered because I don't... There's not a whole lot of research I even care to get. Almost all the research in this game after a certain point is just like, your towers have more HP, and it's just like, that's dumb. Hell yeah, planes. It's almost tempting to just have a billion interceptors, because I think they can actually take out the Helioses before the before they land. You know, just absolutely skip bombers. I probably shouldn't, though, because bombers might be the only ones with an AoE. I just don't see the bombers actually doing much. I don't really see the interceptors doing much. It's really the cyclones that are just, like, finding targets and just... Okay, screw it. We're just going all cyclones. There are three plane types, but the only plane type I care for are cyclones. Oh, shit. Look at that. That's a lot. I think I missed. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, my biggest problem is it just seems like my bombers tend to just peace out and fly wherever. Okay, and we're kind of back up. Getting up to 100 for day 100 is going to be tough. We'll probably be okay. okay. Give me some purple cores game. I need them for the big guns. Damn it! You shit! Alright, whatever. Uh, but yeah, most of the research tree at this point is like, increase your tower HP. Increase your... Your sub-tower HP. There's a couple other, like, abilities that I could get. But like, see, deploys repair drones, which seek out and repair tor tower structures, which... Yeah, that doesn't... There's... There's not... And I guess I could, like, beeline for the Seeker Mines. Those could be kind of good. Let's see. Big missiles, your best weapon. Apart from air raids. Yeah, I kind of figured as much. Uh, let's see. Speaking of... Surface air missile? No. Massive area dip. Wow. Okay, sure. Yeah, let's reforge this as much as I can. Actually, I think that's good enough. I think the upper limit on this thing is 600. I could keep pumping resources into it, but 500 damage is pretty dang good. Alright. Uh, let's see. Yeah, keep getting more blue cores. Demand Master of Orion Stellar Converters. Oh. Oh, that's an, that's some brownie points there. Ma Master of Orion had fun guns. That's always one of those games that I've never seen somebody come close to matching. Stellaris comes... Stellaris gets there. 
my biggest beef with Stellaris is purely just the fact that uh, there's not a whole lot of fine control. Yep, okay, that's pretty satisfying. There's not a whole lot of fine control over, like, what goes onto your ships and stuff. If it had, like, if it had the weapon variety and crazy builds that Master of Orion had, I'd be so happy. Same thing with, like, Endless Space. Because, like, you can still switch your guns around, but, like, Master of Orion was just so unbalanced. There were so many insane things that you could do. And, yeah, I just haven't come across. You can build it and destroy solar systems in Space Empires 5. Huh. I actually don't think I've ever even heard of that one. Let's see, will I check out Solaris Federations when it comes out? Maybe. Unfortunately, people tend to vote with their views, and Stellaris is like the one series no one will watch. Maybe if I were to play Stellaris, it would be I stream it, and then the um and then the footage is, I actually hire an editor and we, we figure out how to like do TLDR things, but even then. Sins of a Solar Empire was fun. Yeah, I like Sins of a Solar Empire. I liked it a lot. I think the main issue I had with it was, I mean, there's, there's two issues I had with it. Main issue is just the fact that like, it was really fun for the first like five hours, maybe 10 hours of a run. And then after a certain point, you're like, oh God, this is a slog. Because um, you kind of hit the tech tree limitations, and then it's just a matter of, like, slowly gaining galactic control. Maybe I was on bigger galaxies, but it felt like it needed a bigger tech tree for how ridiculous it was. Uh, and the other issue is because uh, the CEO is an awful person. I actually talked about this the last time um, we played Tower, but, like, I did some digging because, you know, if I'm going to call somebody an awful person, I should have some, like, evidence evidence but the guy the guy straight up has like wrote his own book that it alludes to effectively um current immigrant crises crises in the u.s and europe in a very unfavorable light and i was just like Ugh. and he also like more or less uh there's just so much like if you go if you google the guy uh, you'll quickly just run into a lot of people being like, oh yeah, he's not a good guy. And a lot of information from him, like, on Twitter more or less proven that point. And so, I don't know. But once again, I did not know that it really sucks if I liked the games. And I do! I love almost all of Stardock's library. They were actually one of my first, like, double-A, uh, producers, publishers, developers that, like, I liked their games from, and they keep sending me games, being like, hey, you know, we love your content, cover our stuff, and I'm like, I, I just can't. I just can't. Okay, well, we're just gonna keep collecting blue cores. If they're not gonna give me purple, I'm just going to have so many cyclones they'll block out the, my ability to see the rest of this game. <laughs> So many cyclones. We're almost done. The plane shall blot out this game. We this music is appro appropriate. Hell yeah, approaching Nirvana. Let's see, is there some form of nuke in this game? There is. It's this big surface, uh, surface to, s I don't know, this big missile. It, it is appropriately strong. This should not, this is dumb. Well, it's fine. I have so many cyclones that these poor tanks just don't stand a chance. <laughs> But yeah, it's not, it's not really a nuke, which is unfortunate. I feel like every game needs to go play EDF and just be like, 
How do we make our equipment interesting? And EDF is just like, I got you. We've got insane shit, useless garbage, and everything in between. Clearly, I need to play uh, some more EDF again. I just... Once you play a bunch of EDF, then it's just like, I don't... I don't know. It gets old without people. The energy weapons in Iron Rain were fun. Pretty much all of the weapons in Iron Rain were actually pretty good. Like, they... They actually really nailed certain aspects of this game... At that... Uh, certain aspects of that game, and if they could absolutely make, like, EDF 5.5 crossed with Iron Rain, like, you'd be golden. Taking out the, uh, the aerator was a bit of a, uh, bit of a shame, because the aerator was super fun, and making you pay for all the vehicles was a little rough. But yeah, what, what games actually have, like, crazy endgame tech that's really fun to play around with? I, I know I was kind of talking about Stol Stellaris unfavorably, but, like, some of the endgame tech there is kind of neat, like the Dyson Spheres and whatnot. My biggest issue is you just really can't, um... You can't really attach a lot of that stuff to your ships. And even the ones that you can, they're like, they're okay. But like, Total Annihilation, Supcom, and EDF have really satisfying upper limits. That I don't think I see a whole lot of other games follow suit on. Because like, if you're gonna have like, crazy weapons or like, a long grind, there better be something waiting at the end of it that is nuts and, like, worthwhile. Modded Rimworld has some insane upper limits. Modded Rimworld does, and that's part of the reason why I like it. Same thing with Modded Factorio. Like, the stuff that you can do in those games can get kind of goofy. I guess I should probably take out some of these, uh, planes. Because it looks like my Cyclones are a little distracted. Only a little. Did they kill him before his shields went down? I think they did. I love I love the cy cyclone spam, because like unlike all of my other jets, which fly past and past, the cyclones are just constantly just like hugging the enemy and murdering them. Fire planets into other planets, like orcs and planetary planetary annihilation. I I would like to play planetary annihilation at some point, but I've just heard from everybody that played it, or like was a fan of their games beforehand, that it just it went bad. Uh, let's grab shield breaker as well. And what else do I even buy? I guess we'll get them the nanogen shields and alloys. Just so they last a little longer. Not that they're dying particularly fast, but still. Yeah, raid tidal coast. Should be okay. <laughs> 